Hey guys, ready for another, I'm gonna call this a product installment. This one's gonna be fun because I gotta cover just jackknife patterns, cattle knives, weird four blade stuff. You guys can tell I'm excited. I'm just gonna get right to it. First off, we've got this little tiny guy. These are my favorites, these little patterns because they're thinner. It's When you handle them, it's just hard to believe they survive. They're not meant for heavy use. This is an old SXM Titusville, uh, Shat and Morgan. They were uh, in business up until about two years ago. Um, Queen, Shat, and Morgan, all that for almost 100 years. Kind of a sad story, the local business closing. But this is a, an early, early example of their stuff with waterfall scales, you'll see. They would call this uh, like a tadpole pattern or a uh, bear head, small jack, boy's knife, possibly. And let me just open this guy up and lay it down for you. The way I would if I was put pictures online. So you guys can see it. I'm gonna call this one 90% probably. Um, good snap. Will be for sale on our website. Super nice knife. I don't see any cracks on it. The waterfall is very active. If you can see it through the video, I'm not sure. Jamie, can you see it? Do you know? The waterfall going back and forth. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it trust me, it's active. And guys, just so you know, anything you buy from us. If, if you don't like it for any reason, you can return it um, anytime. As long as it's in similar condition to, to how you bought it, we'll work something out for you. I'm not gonna to shaft you on, on a, a knife deal, especially even with a video, if you, you can't quite tell what you're getting until you touch it, you know? So, next up. We've got a Boker Serpentine Jack. It looks like a USA model. So, I'm gonna show you guys. We got a Boker USA that's gonna date us right in the 60s era somewhere there about and as we show more Boker knives you guys will see how we date these things uh, nice jackknife pattern standard classic you'll see this with American knives German knives you know um, pretty pretty basic standard stuff super nice knife though and and not that common in Boker really the odd shield on it maybe it was replaced at some point don't see any cracks or anything. Very nice knife, guys. Put this up against the ruler. All right. Ooh, here's a new one I just got today. I get excited about new ones. We got a Miller Bros. Uh, Merritt, an early one. Ebony Cattle. I don't see any uh, any chips or cracks on it. It's a big, heavy work knife here, guys. Um, if you've if you've dealt with knives for a while, you know these things. They're uh, kind of a step above the rest. If if not, pay uh, closer attention to this one and I'll show you some stuff that might help you with dating these guys and, and maybe avoiding fakes. There's still company using these trademarks, by the way, so you have to be careful about that. These guys, I mean, with, with a scale like this and a stamp like this, I can tell that this is original, early 1900s, late 1800s probably. Hard snap. Again, these, these things were meant to be used and this guy was used. Its blades are still almost full. Awesome snap, a hundred and some odd years later. And you can hear that, that audible, vicious snap, hard half stops on it, which you don't see on cattle knives that often. Let's see, and a master half stop, so that's almost uh, a no-go anymore. Like, this, just, they don't do it. So, one of my favorites, to beauty. That will be on our website. And again, guys, if you want more pictures or questions or anything, just post the stuff down there and we'll try to help you out. Oh, I don't know if I want to put this one on the website, but I have to show it to them. This one, okay, so this is uh, the first of a, we'll call this a contract knife. Uh, a lot of companies, you can imagine like uh, Sears or Ace Hardware or something. Imagine, you know, every town having 10 or 15 hardware stores or maybe just one, and, and every one of those hardware stores having its own in-house brand, then you'd have a company like Winchester or New York Knife Co. providing all of those knives to all of those companies. So you'd have Dan's brand, uh, you know, et cetera, knife, made by New York Knife Co. over and over. And I'll, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about, but import knives or, or things with different labels on them. This one is an Adolf Blaish uh, JS Holler Tower brand. I know, that's a mouthful. <laughs> San Francisco. Uh, I'm, what I'm gathering from looking at it basically is it's a, a German import knife. 
uh, for a company in, in San Francisco, if I remember right with these guys. This one's really early. Uh, stag scales, very odd four blade pattern with the two large running down the center. And the two large are running on their own back spring. As you guys can see, you see one, 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 one. So we got these two blades running on one back spring, these two blades running on the other back, back spring. And let me do an open shot here because this one's just, I've never seen this pattern before, at least not set up like this. Super cool knife. Again, I, I wasn't joking. Like this is one that I, I probably would personally keep under normal circumstances, but as Jamie knows, I end up selling everything eventually. But super rare. I won't find another one of these. This is one of those one-off things. So John Holler and company, uh, Tower Brand. They had a few others like Razor Steel, things like that. Um, the trademarks just changed. The hardware uh, brand names would change basically. And interestingly, some of these hardware companies like Shapely and stuff were, were in business from the 1800s all the way until, some of them almost until a, a decade or two ago. So you'll see st stuff that's almost current with them. It's really, it's kind of depressing, but it's really cool because you can trace history with it. Beauty of a knife here. Okay, next up, this is a cool pattern. We've got an electric cut co, so that's an American brand. Electric was in business, uh, let's see, mid 1800s. They started as Friedman Lauder Young, which was a import company. Transition got bought out. They ended up transit. They ended up uh, merging into New York Knife Co. in the mid early 1900s, if I remember right. Sorry guys, I'm wondering. This one is a Newark stamp. That tells me it was made in the late 1890s. See, it's kind of a sway back, uh, worm groove jack. Great snap, great half stop. Beautiful pattern. This one has been lightly cleaned. When you say lightly cleaned, you see it's got a polish on it. All right, so it, it's got a, it, it's been touched up, but it hasn't been reprofiled. No one's had it on like a, a grinder and gone to town on it. It's just been straightened out a little bit, it looks like. Um, but you could tell it's, when these things hit bench grinders and stuff, you can see the you can kind of see the wear lines and you start to look for it. So it's electric Newark. You see our nice worm groove green bone on this one. Great snap. There's your reverse scale. I think I see one tiny pin crack down here, guys. And let's get you a closed length there. This uh, again is a uh, a lot of the stuff I'm showing you is kind of one of a kind. The Newark stamps on these are almost impossible to find. I see the Electric Cut Co. New York ones, relatively common. Uh, Newark ones in good condition, almost impossible. Ooh, another fun one. So this falls into the, the jackknife tool knife category. Because you'll see here, I put it for you, we got an auto radio knife. This guy here is our screwdriver, wire stripper, et cetera, et cetera. I'll show you that in a second. And our master blade. So since we've got a tool in it, we can call this a tool knife or a kind of a combo knife, which has its own collectability and its own category of collectors. Stuff's hard to value, guys. You gotta be really careful with it. It's all over the place. Um, it can be a fortune, it can be nothing. So just be careful when anything's called a tool knife. And I'll, I'll get into more about that later. This one is by, uh, Yale brand, our very best, super rare stamp, and even rarer to find it legible. It's almost always just worn to, to crap. You can see this one open. Again, this one, light cleaning, not reprofiling by any means. Very nice auto and radio knife, guys. This, again, very uncommon. Not one you'll see two of, or very unlikely. Hard snaps. A lot of the Yale knives overextended for some reason. I don't know if it was a wear thing with them. So if you see down here, where the where the spine of the uh, the blade meets the back spring, it would wear here. So you would end up with a blade that was overextended, kind of sitting back like this. It didn't really affect anything, but it's kind of ugly to look at. It just it just bothered me from a collector's perspective. This one does not have that though. So last shot looks like we're. Hair over three inches closed. Okay. 
This one's kind of fun. So we've got a Royal brand. It's like a three and a half inch or so. Uh, it's kind of standard jackknife pattern. This one's got a master etch. It just says Royal brand, made in USA. We have no tang stamps or anything to identify who made it. But having seen a, you know, just a, a whole bunch of knives in my, in my lifetime, more than anyone probably should see, I can tell from looking at this guy that it was probably made by Queen uh, on contract. You can tell from the scales, the, the action, you know, just, just the general feel of the knife. It, it looks like a Queen knife from the 50s or 60s. Um, unique and just that that to see it in almost new condition with this identifier on it is is unheard of these always end up as you'll see them on ebay as made in usa jackknife or just you know unbranded jackknife with bovine bone handles just because this is worn off and it's actually a queen knife because this is gone and we have no identification unfortunately it takes about 30 percent of your value away this one Basically in new condition, close to it. Yeah, almost three and a half inches, I was close. All right. Here's a fun one, guys. This is one of my favorite early brands, and one of the more collectible ones. It's a Valley Forge, equal end. I'm just gonna call it a larger pen knife. It's not a jackknife pattern, that's for sure. It's got a very, very cool, I don't know if it's original, but it's got a stars and stripes shield on it. Um, super cool. If it's not original, it was very well done. Um, pinned on, obviously, it's not moving or anything, so, so very well done. Nice bone handles. I don't see any chips or crack. Actually, I see one crack running down this pin right here, guys. Let's check out the blades. Everything looks really good. So there's this guy open. I'll let you guys get a shot of it. Maybe it's like this. There's your backside. You can see the VF stamp on the rear. Um, this company is pretty prolific in the early 1900s too. These companies kind of ran from the 18 to the early 1900s when you know the the pocket knife industry unfortunately kind of died. Um, great snap on both blades. See this one is a little over three inches open. Three and a quarter um interestingly at, at least i add value for shields um a lot of people collect buy shields i am not gonna you know skyrocket something based on a shield's rarity but i i on some knives i'd say it adds 20 to 30 percent value on on just as a figural thing okay Next up, we got a big, beefy dogleg jack. Big work knife, look at this, guys. These are very collectible. Um, I know a lot of people that collect dogleg patterns from little tiny peanuts or uh, tadpoles all the way up to the big four, four inch jumbos. Um, some people collect just within a category. Um, and if you guys hear that, that's my dog walking around. Don't worry, it's, it's growing pains. <laughs> This one, interestingly, again, though, is, is Royal Brand, so we have a different iteration. I didn't do that on purpose. This Royal Brand, you'll see, has actual tang stamps, so we're not dependent on that, that etch to identify it. It says Royal Brand. I think it says something, our very best, or top quality, something along those lines. Again, a contract knife. This one, you know, I couldn't tell you who made it. I don't, I don't think this one was... Well, not any of the big guys that I know right off the top of my head. The quality's really good. Snap is good. It kind of has cataragus on it, but, but maybe not. Uh, tough to say. Great quality knife, go, though, guys. And you'll see uh, sometimes brands like this, even though the quality is the same, don't command necessarily the same price as, a, as like a top-tier brand. So this is where a lot of collectors, you can get some premium, awesome quality stuff to get your hands on, and you don't have to pay, you know, 800 or a thousand dollars or whatever it may be for a knife uh, of the same quality where you can get these guys for you know maybe 100 or 150 bucks so keep your eyes on this stuff again guys if it's coming from us the quality is great if you don't agree to send it back we'll refund you okay what do we have next oh another contract knife this one i could tell you guys and i'm just gonna start saying it if you guys believe me i hope uh this 
a dead ringer for a Robeson knife, um, straight off. I mean, the, the bone, the pattern of it, the action of it. This one's for uh, Van Camp Hardware, so one of your larger hardware companies. So I'm going to call this a Robeson contract knife for Van Camp, circa 20s, 30s probably. So this looks just like a Robeson jackknife from the 20s or 30s. Uh, very well kept. No master etch. Great snap, great half stop you guys will see. And you can see it in the hand. And uh, some people will call this uh, a teardrop because of the uh, sort of pronounced shape here. See how it comes into that, that teardrop shape. So if you're looking for jack patterns um, and you're like, what's a teardrop, teardrop or equal end? Just remember, you want to see that real that swell into that that kind of tight drop formation there. Um, that's for people that shop by patterns. I'll get into that stuff later. Beautiful knife. Okay, guys, I got two more, but they're good ones. This one is this is one of those ones that you just hate to sell, but you know someone should own it um, and, and treasure it like it should be treasured. So. Uh, if I show it, someone's going to buy it, but unfortunately, here it is. I, if I remember right, these were called Crown or Eureka Jack. I could be wrong on that. Or a Swayback Jack. You can see this big pronounced arch here. And this big, heavy, almost sheep's foot blade, just straight down. It's just got a mean, mean profile to it. And I should have said brand first, guys. Really obscure and one of our top tiers, uh, Pine Knot. They still make a copy of this. Um, well, I'm not going to call it a copy, but the, the trademark's been sold and sold and sold, and now it's essentially you can get a, a pine knot Chinese knife nowadays. So if you're just starting, guys, you got to be really careful because a knife like this that's clean or has been cleaned, you know, if you're looking at a photo, this guy can look a lot like a brand new knife to someone, and you know, you could lose hundreds instead of 20 bucks. So I know this one's original just because I can tell. From the angles that they've come across, I can tell that someone's cleaned it a little bit, which tells me it's old automatically. I don't mind if knives have been cleaned, by the way. Tank stamps are really nice and clean. Old bone. You can see the original wear on the inside. I mean, it's, you handle it, you know it's old, but a super, super rare pattern, super rare stamp. Let me put this one down for you guys so you can see it clearly again. I didn't see any chips or cracks on it just a, a real stunner these I, I always love this pattern because it just stands out it it kind of commands attention it's one where people are like what what is that you know so one of my favorites one more to go guys it's one of the big boys this old girl seen somewhere uh, you know it's 110 plus years old probably so go figure big 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 old cataragus this one is a 12819. I believe they call this the Yukon Folding Hunter. Uh, you get into these guys, and so you can open a book, and it'll tell you in mint condition that this guy is worth, you know, roughly two thousand dollars, give or take. So you go and find one like this guy. Their blade's pretty full, right? We're running seventy percent. Not bad for something this old. Bone is pretty good. Lock up is pretty good. You start looking here and we got some liner separation. So maybe the knife has been apart. Maybe repin. We got a crack here. And you see, it, it, I'm not trying to devalue my own stuff, guys, but you see how this, just like a used car or something else, we take away 30% of the blade. We add cracks. We take away our master etch. All that stuff and having seen enough of these is going to take us from a couple grand down to three to four hundred bucks. Uh, give or take so you know still a very nice knife but you can see how quickly our value kind of drops off on these guys and I will hold true to that it'll be on the website for 400 bucks if you guys want to make me an offer for 300 I'll take it <laughs> but there it is it's very nice our lot kind of sits down here this way I think it may have been repinned at some point I don't have an issue with people doing work on ice as long as it's done well this one you can see the lock up up here is very good, almost no wobble, and, and a very tight lockup, which is almost, it's almost impossible to find in these old ones. A lot of times this lock will break, so I could just 
kind of push my hand past it. Dangerous, the, the, the lever doesn't work. There's no snap on the clothes. This one was well done if it was a part. And with that guys, that's the last knife of this video. I appreciate y'all looking. Um, again, if you have specific questions, put them in the comments. If you wanna see specific brands, modern stuff, anything guys, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to show. So post and I hope you like it and we'll keep putting them up there.